for all of you that bought the Gigabyte G5. There are some excellent news coming your way when it comes to the performance of this budget-friendly gaming laptop and we're gonna discuss it today. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hardware channel. My name is Ivan and today we're going to look at undervolting the Gigabyte G5 gaming laptop with RTX 3060 and Intel Core i5 10500H previously I was not able to undervolt this processor and even if you guys saw my previous videos uh, the temperatures are pretty high the cooling solution inside this chassis is not that competent and we have only three ventilation points that are exhausting air one for the cpu two for the gpu and that's about it that results into the cpu being very hot and running thermal throttling which we really don't want to see when we game and we expect to get the maximum performance from the laptop that we just purchased now i was impressed with the performance of the rtx 3060 being able to go all the way to 105 watts tgp and that's excellent when it comes to games but with more power comes more heat so i was looking for a way to undervolt this processor bring down the temperatures a little bit uh, you guys see the previous video i already repasted the cooling solution that shaved off a couple of degrees but again really not that much that i was hoping to get so with undervolting, I was able to get another 5 to 6 degrees down, which finally brought the processor in normal levels and it's not thermal throttling, even in the highest uh, demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077. And to help yourself out additionally, to get maybe another degree or two, it's always better to get a laptop cooling pad. I have one currently. I don't run the fans on it because it's loud, as the fans of the laptops are already loud. I don't want additional noise but just that option and that help of elevating it from the desk and perforations underneath so the fans can breathe in some cool air helps a lot and again you're getting another couple degrees which in the long run helps so without further ado with me talking too much i'm gonna go into the tutorial it takes about 10-15 minutes for you guys to do it and at the end we're gonna talk about it in the conclusion undervolting the gigabyte g5 with the core i5 10500h and just a quick uh, look on my processor right here 10500h you can see we have a memory we have a graphics card and everything i had to plug it in actually to my external monitor so i can get to record the desktop the benefit of plugging it to the external monitor is also surpassing optimus so we're going to do some testing uh, with optimus off on external monitor as well on the follow-up video just a quick note but yeah let's go ahead into the tutorial and uh, i've written down a file with easy instructions which i'm going to go ahead and upload somewhere if you guys prefer uh, to read the instructions but it's very very easy and first step you need to do uh, right away is before you start the process go ahead in your bios and disable your secure boot after that it's very easy all the links will be in the description of the video to the tool and some other helpful links so you'll be able to download it and go ahead the tool is called inside tool and that inside tool is what we're going to be using to enable undervolting on our gigabyte g5 now first thing first we can go ahead and download the tool this is one of the links uh, i'm going to put it down below in the description but again you can find it all over the internet just google uh, that name inside tool and it's going to pop up for for many locations for the purposes of this video i've already downloaded it and extracted uh, so what you need to do is when you download it, extract it in the exact same name into your C drive. Or you can do it any other location in your main drive. Or whatever you want to do, just keep in mind when you deal later with uh, comment prompt that uh, the path is going to be a little bit different than mine. It's going to take a little bit more of a typing. So yeah, go ahead and uh, do uh, follow my steps if you want to. So once I have this download it it's right here inside my c drive so if i go inside this is what we have now from here all we need to do is go to the little search find common prompt right click and run as administrator it will ask you yes or no yes uh, that's what we want to do and from here you just need to copy and paste what i'm doing cd c to inside the tool so basically that's giving you the path to that directory once you get inside here you can type dir or 
directory so it can give you all the files inside that way you see that they are there and the next step is again very very simple copy the next one paste it here and execute with enter because i've already done it i don't want to create a new file but basically what this is going to do is going to create a text file and that text file is going to be generated in the same directory where the rest of the files are from here you can leave the command prompt running in the back just go ahead here find the file which is called vars or v-a-r-s and open it that file is quite big so you're gonna have to just go ahead and do control f to search and from here you search for cpu setup so cpu setup it's going to find the right spot for you you can close that search location scroll down and here it is now keep in mind this number right here doesn't matter and varies between the different users the different computers everything else so it really doesn't matter what really matters is this cpu setup that's what you need to find and from here you need to find the line that it's this one odo that applies for all computers so look for this line right here this is the one you need to care about and from here you need to count one two three four five six and the sixth line over here you need to change from zero one to zero zero that's all you need to do to make the change so by default this is going to be one but you need to go ahead and change it from one to zero and this is it so from here you need to go ahead to file save as and save the file not as vars but as vars m so once you save the vars m file you can just go ahead and close it i've already created mine so if i go back to it let me show you real quick so if i go ahead and search over here go to the odo line you'll see that one two three four five six my sixth one is zero zero that's what i need to have let me close that again so once you have this done you can go ahead here in the common prompt grab the next command line which is right here and execute it you paste it over here you hit enter it's going to work for a couple seconds and it's going to give you a bunch of messages but what you need to focus on is when you go down and scroll find that same section that i was talking about that varies between the different computers this one so if you find this one and says successful you should be good to go all you need to do is after that is close everything reboot your computer and you're gonna have a working under vaulting and if i go to my throttle stop right here i'm gonna show you what i have i'm not gonna go over the throttle stop settings but i'm gonna show you what i have as settings right here so my current settings are minus 89.8 on both cpu core and cpu cache this is the lowest i could have gone with my cpu currently without uh, crushing or having any problems so that number will vary between uh, everybody's processor uh, and everybody's situation so you feel free to test different uh, settings to make sure what's the stable for you but that's what i was able to achieve and of course achieving this reflected to these kind of temperatures most of the times in the 80s yeah we have one in 93 but that's nothing compared to before where i was hitting uh, almost 100 degrees with this cpu so yeah so no problem whatsoever i really like these results and with the combination of repasting and a laptop cooling pack that is uh, definitely a winner combination and you get a far more performance from your rtx 3060 uh, because it scales all the time the cpu stays uh, in a higher clock all the time as well uh, so yeah it's uh it's it's very very beneficial again all the links will be in the description of the video i'm going to upload the text file as well if you guys want to follow it and make it a lot easier for yourself keep in mind that if you update the bios in the future uh, all these settings will be reverted and you're going to have to uh, do it again because these commands are going into your bias and enabling uh, the undervolting plus don't use uh, var files from any other bias or previous version or anything like that if you update your bias go through the steps create new var files and do the same steps again personally i don't see gigabyte pushing any updates on the bias of this uh, gigabyte g5 uh, so yeah probably is going to stay the way it is uh, for a long long time but that doesn't matter i'm happy that i am able to undervolt now 
so yeah that's pretty much it guys let's go into the conclusion all right conclusion time and you guys see this is extremely easy to do initially i thought it's going to be a cumbersome process that's going to take a long time and i'm not going to be able to do it because of that kind of expectations but after i started doing it and it takes me no more than 10 minutes i was super happy at the end to be able to use throttle stop or xdu to adjust my voltages now everybody's results will be different and if you want to follow some throttle stop uh, guidance or some xdu guidance youtube offers plenty of those videos a lot of guys have done very nice videos explaining how to do it personally i'm not going to do go into the depths of every single detail uh, my personal situation with my cpu i was able to undervolt only with uh, minus 90 millivolts some people can have a better results over 100 some people can have lower it really is depending on the chip and the silicon lottery so what your results are going to be they're going to vary and that's the part that takes a lot of testing the actual process of undervolting is easy as you see uh, but that personally for me took me about a day day and a half to kind of narrow down the exact millivoltages that i want to set up so i can undervolt uh, because you know if you set it too high and you play something demanding computer crashes uh, and i have to go very very little increments to narrow it down to these specific numbers because even point two up for me resulted on crashes during cyberpunk and with this specific undervolt i'm having right now all games are running with no problem no crashes and most of all the computer runs a lot lot cooler when we summarize the undervolt performance plus the repasting plus the cooling pad for the laptop we're talking about seven eight to nine degrees celsius which is a great benefit because you're going to have a better performance more silent fans and at the end of the day longevity is going to be much longer for your internal components your cpu your gpu their life is going to be prolonged because they're not cooking in in the heat box right so heat is detrimental for technology or anything else and it's much better when it runs cooler so yeah that's pretty much it guys quick little tutorial i'm having a very exciting pre-build on the next couple of videos coming your way you guys are gonna love it hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new check out the links in the description if you want to support the channel directly so i can bring you more videos like this every day and as always guys you have a wonderful day